but you can check out more about that on our channel. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's fine, channel's okay, you can say that. <laughs> hey everybody, my name is Jessica, senior agronomist at Sound Agriculture. We are here today in a cornfield, a silage cornfield in Washington. Uh, today we're going to talk about different observations we can make at this time of the season. Just really basic observations to help us determine whether we can make changes for next year's crop with our nutrients. So right now we're about a week out, about two weeks out from cutting our, our silage crop here behind us. And this is a great time to go out into your field and just observe different things uh, to tell us whether or not we're lacking nutrients, um, or if we have any sort of diseases coming out at this point. We're in a silage field today, but the observations that we are making can be utilized in your green corn, your sweet corn, any type of corn field. The first thing that we can look at when looking at our plants is where we're seeing any sort of signs of deficiencies. So if we look at our plant, we can look up high, down low, give it a scan. If we see any sort of deficiencies in our leaves happening at the bottom of our plant versus the top of our plant, that tells us a lot about which nutrients might be lacking. We have our mobile nutrients and our immobile nutrients. So our mobile nutrients, we're going to see our deficiencies at the bottom of our plant. That's because when we start getting those deficiencies, all of those nutrients will start moving to the top of our plant. If we have immobile deficiencies, we're gonna see those at the top of our plant. Our mobile nutrients are nitrogen, our phosphorus, potassium, and magnesium. The immobile nutrients that we have are all the rest, pretty much. So we have our calcium, boron, zinc, iron, uh, manganese. Those are all nutrient deficiencies that you might see appear at the top of your, of your plants versus your NPK, magnesium. Those deficiencies will appear in the bottom leaves of your plant. The next thing we can look at is what type of deficiencies are we seeing? Are we seeing stunting in our crops? That would be something that you might be able to check out at the beginning of the season and really catch it early on. But walking through your fields now, you may be able to see places where you might have stunting in different spots throughout the field. The other thing that we can look at in particular to leaves is we can look at if there is chlorosis or necrosis happening. So chlorosis, there's different types of chlorosis we can be seeing. It can be intervenal, it can be along the margins, um, it could be the whole leaf turning a, a light green or a yellow color or a v-shape for your nitrogen um, the other thing we can see is necrosis so that's the next step usually going forward after chlorosis you start getting necrosis which is the death and dying of the leaf this is an example of a of intervenal chlorosis happening in this plant and here these were pulled from inside of the field a little bit further this would be an example of also a different type of chlorosis all the way to necrosis. And this we can see is a nitrogen deficiency. Um, we know that because it goes from the intermargins out to the tips making a V shape. So these are our nitrogen deficient leaves. And these again come from the bottom of the plant. So remember mobile versus immobile where you're going to see those deficiencies. Here's another one that we spotted. This is quite a quite common thing that you'll see at this time of the season. Um, this is another example of a potassium deficiency that you'll see in the leaves. Again, these will be at the bottom of the plant. So this you're seeing that necrosis and chlorosis happening at the edge of your leaves. So you got your potassium versus your nitrogen. These are the, probably the more common things that you'll see at this type of this time of the year. The other observation we can make is with our actual cobs of our corn. We can peel back the layer, the shell of the corn, and see if there's any sort of fungal diseases, any sort of stress that's happening with the fill of the cob, if there's not any of the fill happening at the top of your cob. This is a cob that we pulled earlier in the field. I can see that there might be some potassium deficiencies happening here. It's not fully filling the cob all the way to the top. Thank you for watching this video. There's one other observation we can make in the field related to stock strength which I'll go over in another video that you can find on our feed.